Today, we're going to try to preserve a hamburger and french fries from McDonald's for a whole year by completely filling them with epoxy. Let's see if it works. We bought a bag with a fresh hamburger and flavorful french fries at McDonald's and brought it home. Our taster immediately came running at the smell. Cookie, you can't eat the hamburger, it's for the experiment. You can only smell it. As always, McDonald's food smells amazing. They know how to make your mouth water. We got the usual burger with a cutlet, tomato, herbs and sauces. It will be interesting to taste in a year. To get started, we'll need a framework for the fill, which we'll make out of these acrylic plates. Hey you, what are you doing? Whoa, I, I turned around and those hungry mouths ate half the burger. Oh, you two are a dream team. Well, what do we do now? Well, we went back to the McDonald's and got another burger. This time, we lock those two hungry ones in a room, and so we will need these 2mm thick acrylic plates. The sides are as flat and transparent as glass, which allows us to get some smooth edges and visually control the pouring process. First, we need to measure the diameter of the burger. It's around 10 cm. But we need to take a bit extra, and we measured the lucky number of 13 cm. We make the deepest cuts in the plastic with a stationary knife. Afterward, we put this cut on the edge of the table and apply pressure to break the plate into two pieces. As a result, we have prepared five pieces to create an acrylic box. We take the rubber gloves so as not to leave any fingerprints. Cutting off a piece of scotch tape, we fix all the pieces together to get the desired container. Now, with the help of a hot melted glue, carefully fill the joints, just so that the container had no holes and all the epoxy didn't flow out on the table. As a result, we have such a small aquarium for the burger, and for the french fries, we have made an even smaller one. Now it's time for the epoxy resin. It consists of two components, the clear resin itself and the hardener. It is necessary to measure them to the right proportions, so we use an accurate Chinese scale. Pour 50 grams of hardener and twice as much resin. Now you have to mix everything thoroughly, otherwise the resin won't turn into plastic. We bend a piece of copper wire a few times and get such a screwdriver nozzle, which will act as a mixer. After 5 minutes of stirring, we pour it all into a clean glass and stir it again. It is hard to explain why we had to do this, but it just had to be done. Now we pour a thin layer of epoxy on the bottom of the tanks to seal all the glass as it hardens. Also, it will be a kind of elevation on which we put the burger. At this point, there was a leak in the small container. Probably it wasn't glued properly, but we quickly corrected that mistake. Next day, the resin hardened and we put a burger in its place. It fit perfectly and there was still room for the resin. We make another batch, yet again a small one. This is for pouring the burger on top. The crust will harden and attach the burger to the bottom of the container, so it won't float during the final pour. We do the same thing with the potatoes and leave them overnight. In the morning, the resin hardened and the burger seems to hold the bottom of the tank. By the way, we had a little extra resin left in the glass, and overnight something happened to it. The glass was twisted by some kind of magic, and I'm already worried that the same thing would happen to the burger. Now we need to mix a half-litre cup of epoxy. 
and since our little whisk is no longer able to handle it, we make such a little whisk out of a wooden stick and ties. Mix well, trying to avoid the formation of small bubbles, and finally, dip our burger. The process is still very interesting and catching. It is necessary to pour slowly, so that the resin gets into all the gaps, and as little air as possible is left inside the burger. In fact, this is where bacteria or mold can grow. A little bit of sauce dripped out of the burger. But we pick it up with a napkin, so that it doesn't mess up the view. It's much better now. A few minutes later, when we poured the burger all the way through, trouble happened. The top of the bun of the burger split off and floated upwards. It was like the burger had opened its mouth. On one hand, it's good because there is a lot of resin inside the layers, but on the other hand, it is a bit unusual. So, we got a flying bun. Then we pushed it back in and pressed the lid with the weights. But the problems didn't end there. The resin began to get very hot because of the chemical reaction and some parts of the burger started to boil, releasing bubbles. I don't know exactly the result, but we'll see. Let's fill up the fries and leave them there for two days. We decided to use the rest of the resin to coat the strawberry, so that it would look like a caramel around it. I wondered what will happen to it inside such a shell. We spread out the leaves and leave them on the table until the resin hardens. After two days, it was time to remove the plates from our covered burger. They came off quite hard, but as we expected, the walls of the hardened resin turned out to be flat. We cleaned up the edges and got such a brick with an encapsulated burger. Just look how cool it is! The burger looks like it was thrown into boiling water and in that moment frozen just like that. It would probably be hard to achieve that effect on purpose. The fries, unlike the burger, were firmly fixed to the bottom and didn't float anywhere. And so, our experiment has begun. The burger is encased in such a transparent plastic brick, and no one knows what will happen to it in a year. But then, we cut it all open and taste it. Maybe bacteria will start to grow there and eat the entire bun and cutlet in that long time. Or maybe it will be covered in black mold. Write your predictions in the comments and then we'll see who was right in the end. <laughs>